put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Edge of Tomorrow 3D Mood Review. What I'm about to tell you is going to sound crazy, but the more I explain, the more this is going to make sense. Hollywood actually made an action movie out of a Groundhog Day kind of concept and apparently didn't even occur to them that it wouldn't have any attention. I'm getting ahead of myself. Tom Cruise is playing a... He's basically playing the coward. It's, it's the, the false dichotomy of there are cowards and then there are self-sacrificing warriors and the latter builds tomorrow. This, this movie is so... This movie is so war-hungry, so pro-war, so rah-rah. This is the kind of thing that at any time would be, even if it might not at the time be seen as, it would still be just not on the side of history. Let's, let's just go with that. But at this particular point in history, with, with several pointless wars, you know, it's, some of them still going on, and, you know, deficits and all this, and war, really war is the big, I'm not saying, I get that, you know, Hollywood is a little behind the trends, and we have this sort of thing of, you know, Hollywood likes to kind of try to justify the things that we know are going on. So, you know, you have 24 Jack Bauer torturing terrorists, in order to get information when we know that doesn't actually happen like that. And then we have these war movies where, yeah, the war is won by, you know, typical... Anyway, yes, Tom Cruise is playing the coward, and maybe over the course of the movie he might grow as a person. He finds that the the attempt to invade, I think they're basically trying to take back France. The, there's an alien invasion and they've already taken Europe, basically. And now there are some, you know, the rest of the world is now trying to take back Europe. and. Taking back France will be sort of the, the start of. So, Tom is among those. He plays William Cage. Let's, let's go with that. Cage is sent out to be part of the, the troops to go in, you know, the, the whole Normandy landing thing. Yeah, as, as you see in the trailer as well. It's, it's very nicely done. It, it really has that chaotic Saving Private Ryan kind of thing where, yeah, and, and the action in this is very sort of intimate and personal in, in perspective. You, you're always following the, the people that it's... So, you know, while clearly way more is going on, we're, we're only seeing a fraction of the overall battle, we still, yeah, we are only seeing that little fraction, so that's very nice though. Anyway, he finds that that assault does not go well, and he wakes up and is now repeating those same 24 hours over and over again, and he meets Rita Ratowski, whose name I'm pretty sure is, in fact, a sneeze, and she is sort of, she's 
she's more experienced and she trains him after you know she demonstrates that she can do the cobra and yeah that's basically it. they they train for a while and there is sort of an overall goal some something that they hope will end the invasion i don't think i'll be divulging that here but yeah and excuse me the i i really feel i must get the 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 big thing out of the way immediately i've already talked about how the the stance on war in in this film so yeah the the other big thing is as i've already mentioned they didn't it didn't seem to occur to the the powers that be behind this film that something like this wouldn't necessarily have a lot of tension because it is just the same 24 hours over and over again and this was my first thought when i first heard about the movie months ago and if it wasn't Doug Liman directing, I would not have watched this pretty much because that really would have been a deal breaker. And I really don't want to be the I told you so guy, but yeah, I to to briefly address this has been called like the best Doug Liman has done since The Born Identity. I disagree. I it's pretty good. Now the yes, so at its core, we basically have this thing of the twenty four hours will keep going and really the only thing is that before the end of the 24 hours the William Cage has to be shot in the head killed immediately so that he'll come back and the actually I suppose that's pretty much yeah, that's about it. And he can accrue knowledge and physical skill over the course of it. He trains or practices to kind of remember the way things go because that's another thing. Things go the exact same way. There's, I mean, he can try different things and they'll be, you know, there's always the, the you know, it's, it's a trial and error kind of thing. If he does the exact same thing, you know, 50 times, it'll give the exact same result. And that's really good if this was, you know, scientific experiment, not a piece of fiction that's supposed to be tense. But, yeah. Because of that, sure, we... We, the audience, don't know what he knows. We don't know exactly what he's going to do and how it's going to work out. But he does. You know, that's... So So there's that surprise to it. But he isn't afraid. He isn't worried for his safety. And so neither are we. We're, we're given no reason to. And this lack of tension to the action is... It's just, and I'm not saying the action isn't good, but it just it is pretty much devoid of tension, and it it really is a shame. The, the The movie doesn't really go in for any anything that would prevent it from you know anything that would keep the the tension intact. Like I said, it's it's the same way it goes. It's the the only real variable is William and and Rita, you know. And there is a little bit thing of you know 
if Rita doesn't go along with what he says, something might, you know, happen in a way that he wishes it didn't, that, that kind of thing. But other than that, yeah, that's that's literally all there is of the, you know, tension unpredictability. Anyway, yes, he's he's practicing to, he's remembering, memorizing the things that will happen. And at some point in the movie, the writers forgot that that was what they had him do. He's not so much training to be a warrior as he's, I suppose you could say, as he's memorizing and practicing to deal with that, he's also kind of building up... Okay, I'll almost let it slide, but yeah, I'd, I'd still say the movie doesn't completely follow its own logic on that one. And on following its own logic, the ending... Yeah, I'm, I'll go into detail on that, on that one in the thoughts video, but yeah. I think that pretty much gets that out of the way, so yeah, other than that, other than those two major aspects, the lack of tension and the, the war hungriness, this is a really good film. It's genuinely... I mean, as has been said, it's essentially Groundhog Day as an action movie. And it does, it, it has some good fun with that. So, you know, you have the things where you see the same brief bit several times over as he's adjusting to, you know, getting completely, getting the timing down on something. Excuse me, and yeah, like there's, as you see in the trailer, he meets up with Rita, and when he when he wakes up, he's just about to be sent out, you know, or yeah, he he certainly wouldn't have immediate access to Rita, and with that, he he has to figure out a way to get away and get to, yeah, to, to see Rita, and this, yeah, this requires a little timing, a little finesse, and we see him practice on that, and we, we get, you know, the, the action can be well choreographed and big and have some really good moments and that's you know that that does gain some also from the you know 24 hour repetition thing where he knows what will happen and so like there's he he knows that one of his one of the guys in his in his group are going to be crushed by a, a falling ship or something like that. And basically, yeah, we see him try to figure out how to prevent either of them dying from that crash. Now, that does bring back the... the with the action. The, the lack of tension, this whole thing of repeating the same 24 hours, this is something that other recent action movies have done. I'm not saying this is the first, I am saying that it's probably the worst, or at least the worst I've seen, where it'll, it'll show something really cool and really, you know, really impactful because it's showing death of characters we know, or it's showing these really decisive moments in battle. So you see, you know, a whole platoon wiped out in very short order. You know, you have these things, but 
it, you know, instead of it only being like one or two of these big moments in the whole film, it's several because the, there is no consequence to the action. And yeah, that's, that's where the lack of tension really gets, yeah. Now, the, the repetition itself, I think it's, it's a little bit hit and miss, but when it's good, it is really, really good. Like they, they do have a lot of fun with that, with just the, there are a number of variations on just when he wakes up, he is, he basically arrives with, with the, I think it's called the J Squad, and yeah, he's, he meets these people, you know, the first time, and then when it, yeah, he, he gets to know them and, and such, and then, you know, over subsequent waking up and dealing with J Squad, he actually, you know, he he can he can tell them their names. He can, you know, me describe childhood memories and these sorts of things. And yeah, there there are some really nice bits there. And you know, it's never a bad thing to have Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton in general. I I can't think of a movie where I didn't enjoy seeing him. But yeah, Bill Paxton as this ready for combat. I think he's a sergeant. and I mean, evidently, he's not been keeping up on current events, pal, because Earth, Earth has been getting its ass kicked. And he doesn't realize, which Cage does, that, you know, with the impending failure of the invasion, it's game over, man, game over. So, yeah, they have some some fun with with his southern character, and, and on J Squad, they pretty much hit. I mean, it's like they just got the the hat of you know minorities and you know interesting quirky nationalities and such, and just grabbed all of them and put them in a pile that said J Squad. It's, you know, you've you've got an Australian, there's a black guy, there's a southern woman. Pretty sure there's at least one Latino, at least one Brit. Yeah, and they they kind of run the gamut. And they are genuinely, you know, memorable, if not that deep characters and really that goes for the whole film. The, the characters tend to be memorable, they certainly are well characterized, they just aren't all that deep. Now the another thing about the, the lack of tension thing is that it's somewhat like a video game or like a series of montages. It's just, you know, they, yeah, they keep trying until they, until they've found a way to solve the problem. It's, it does feel like you're just watching someone, you know, keep trying at a certain challenge in a video game level, and then they make it, and then they keep going for a little bit, and then they reach a new challenge and keep trying and trying. Now, the movie is 110 minutes, not counting the end credits. There are some really obvious, like, setup lines of dialogue and such. Like, when you, when you see something that turns out to be a setup, you know immediately that it's a setup. There are, yeah, they, they are really, really obvious about it. The plot does have some nice twists, and it doesn't... Yeah, it, it basically 
keeps moving nicely enough. So certainly the pace is is fast. Now the I would say at least personally I didn't think the movie picked up at all until the first time that you know Cage wakes back up in you know at the beginning of the 24 hours the it's it's a combination of the fact that we know exactly where it's going and the enraging false dichotomy of the, the this coward and you know the the warriors and yeah and i mean it's not cruise it's not I can't really think of a movie where I didn't like him in it or, yeah, and maybe especially action movies. He's, he's enjoyable to watch, and in the good way. It's not his fault that this role, is, it's because it's written the way it is. It is just this sort of thing, yeah. Now, Emily Blunt is really cool as Rita Rakowski, Ratowski, and yeah, very, very badass, and it's apparently like her first actual action film. Yeah, she did really well, so keep them coming. Now, or maybe just her first starring role in action. I, yeah, something along those lines. The effects are quite convincing and very gritty. It really feels like you're right there. And in spite of the the concept, this is very realistic. Very feels very realistic at least. Now, the the exosuits are actually at least partially there, and. You know, obviously the, the aliens themselves are CGI, but the film doesn't feel like it's just... You know, there, there's a pretty decent amount of practical effects. It doesn't drown in CGI and, excuse me, physics defying, you know, weightless computer animation. I'm not saying computer, you know, CGI always ends up like that, but it does often work out really well when there's also a lot of practical effects. Now, the the aliens are pretty cool. In in the trailers, you don't quite get a good enough look at them, or at least I didn't. I thought that they were basically like Sentinels, like the Matrix. There is a little bit more to them, and certainly they don't. Their their movement is distinct enough, I would say, and especially when we're talking the the alphas, which have this. Yeah, they 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 look similar to the smaller ones, which again, somewhat like a sentinel, but they have this face with this big, open mouth, and looks very monstrous, very. It's, it, yeah, it, it has sort of a demonic, mythical feel to, to the face. And the, I suppose that one's, yeah, so the, the aliens are called mimics. And I think the idea is that they, I have no idea why that is actually. I, if it was explained, I must have missed it. But they do appear to maybe be able to like move fast enough that they can dodge bullets or something along those lines. Yeah, see, this is where I feel like the movie should have done more to give them insight into their powers. And it's especially... One of the bigger problems is we don't know how they detect the... I mean, I'm not asking for POV shots or, or just something. 
because POV shots can go can get ugly when they aren't used right, but we don't know quite how they detect human beings, and there are several key scenes where it's like, okay, we have to avoid the mimics detecting us, or this is mimic-heavy territory, and the audience were like, how will they detect you? Are they, do they have scanners? Will, you know, will they detect movement? Is it heat? What is it that we, because we, I mean, they, they could, you know, they could be full of it for all we know. Maybe there are no mimics out there. Maybe they're just saying that to ratchet up the otherwise fairly non-existent tension. Yeah, it would, it would have helped a lot. And in general, we just, we don't quite know enough about them. And it does kind of render them just the, the faceless enemy to be destroyed, which it, it just it would have more to it. It would be more interesting if there was a, you know, if we had some idea of what they were on Earth for or, yeah. Now... The 3D is okay. There are a few gimmicky moments, and certainly some of the action benefits from 3D, but frankly, I'd just go for a 2D screening. Now, there are some famous locations fit into the narrative, and it does it has a little bit of a post-apocalyptic thing going on with, you know, basically Europe is abandoned and you know if you go there you risk you know you're deep in mimic territory so yeah you know proceed at your own peril it does have a little bit of the you know the terminator future scenes look especially with the the ships that have some resemblance to the flying hks but it really doesn't feel derivative. It it stands enough on its own, which is also good with because the exosuits. I mean that with that we're not talking Terminator, but we are talking things like aliens. So and yeah, it it doesn't feel like it's actually the, these are pretty cool exosuits. I mean if if someone's gonna you know, if if we're ranking exosuits, this these ones are pretty cool. Possibly, possibly cooler than the ones in Avatar. So, yeah. Now the I suppose that more or less. That now, I suppose that actually more or less covers it. But yeah, so the there is certainly some humor, especially coming from the whole you know it'll repeat thing. You've seen the trailer. There are several things where Rita is just like. Okay, let's just start over, and she gets the gun out and, you know, is about to shoot him. It, that and and some of the, I know exactly what you're going to say, and this is how, you know, the, the Groundhog Day stuff where he's just, he knows exactly the amount of steps to take and this whole thing. So, yeah, that's that's fun. And... Again, I do want to say the action is well done. If if you saw the scenes but you didn't know he was just going to come back to life, they would be really, really great. It's the only negative to them is that there's no tension, but they're they're well choreographed. They allow you to keep track. Like like I said, it's very intimate and personal with the action, you never lose track. It never feels like you're just watching a war. You are, it, rather, you are right there with William Cage in the the battle. You know, it's, 
yeah, if, if you can see, you know, 30 feet off in the distance, it's because he can. And I suppose that more or less covers it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.